Um, I do think want to go back to the question before in relation to um, uh, habitat. I mean, for example, take the decline of the, of the hedgehog, which we've seen a 90% decline, um, which has um, uh, partly uh, as a re result of the number of badgers, of which hedgehogs are a favorite delicacy. Um, now, I know this is, again, a contentious issue, but the reality is, the reality is that um, the, there is a destructive part played by badgers, and they do uh, kill hedgehogs. And I think we have to have a realistic uh, approach to um, the eco-habitat. William, may I, may I introduce here a, a question in direct relation to this? I don't yes. want to stop you, it's important. Area. Um, Rosie Woodroffe on this. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie, where are you? Thank you very much oh, indeed. Oh, gorgeous. <laughs> After an independent expert panel concluded that the 2013 badger culls were neither effective nor humane, the government dispensed with independent oversight. What role do the panellists envision for independent scientific advice in deciding environmental policies? Is that, um, <laughs> Rupert. Is that, a, is that a fair characterisation, um, Rupert, of, uh, of the government policy? Oh, um, you dispensed the independent oversight because it told you something you didn't want to hear, is the, yeah. is the charge. Of course not. Um, <laughs> science uh, and evidence are at the heart of all we do at DEFRA. Um, and um, I work very closely with the chief scientific advisor and indeed the chief plant health officer, which is my side of the business. Uh, and um, you know, we have a, a, a brand new plant biosecurity strategy. We have a tree health management plan. We have a plant health risk register. We have uh, been uh, very much um, focused on in improving plant health uh, since the Kalara outbreak brought home to us uh, that we were ill prepared. And badgers? Uh, well, badgers. Um, TB is costing us £100 million a year. Uh, and it is uh, leading to the deaths, uh, premature and unnecessary deaths of 30,000 cattle. Um, we have in place a comprehensive strategy to deal with uh, uh, TB, uh, it, which includes improved movement controls of cattle, better biosecurity on farm. It includes vaccination but, in but the I think, edge I area. Think I, I, but no country in the world, Jonathan, no country in the world has attained TB-free status without also addressing it in the reservoir in wildlife. And in this country, the reservoir in wildlife is in badgers. So, so but the, the point here is that the, the, the great many people share that view, particularly those who live in rural parts of England and those who seek to farm, obviously. But um, if the independent expert panel says it ain't working, you say, OK, but we're still not going to fix it. We're going to carry on as, as we did, but we're going to ignore what they said. Isn't that crudely what did happen? Absolutely not, no. We absolutely took their advice, particularly on uh, the issues that Rosie raises. Uh, and uh, this year, in fact, it was uh, audited, and um, there were no such problems that occurred. OK, I, I, you're, you're, you've been very patient, eh? <laughs> Um, obviously, in Scotland, we've not gone down the route of a uh, badger cull because we don't have the same problems with TB. I don't think anyone should underestimate the seriousness of TB uh, in livestock and in the wider environment. But I'm actually really interested in the evidence uh, that's due to come out from Northern Ireland where they do have a TB problem and where they've been using alternatives to a badger cull. Uh, and I think the, the government really needs to look at the evidence and see what's working to address what is a very serious issue. But if it's Don't they working have, sorry, to be, sorry to be sort of nerdy about it, but Northern Ireland is quite a discreet area in relation to the number of badgers that are uh, causing a problem and the ability to identify the areas in which they live, isn't it? And the difference, alleged difference between that and England is that in England they're spread across the West Country and elsewhere, and, it, and the swathe is so much greater, and therefore the measures that are being taken in Northern Ireland aren't necessarily uh, uh, applicable to the wider area? Clearly, you can't always just kind of parachute in one methodology, but I think there's nevertheless a great deal of learning that can be taken from different parts uh, of Europe and how these things have been successfully addressed. Uh, but I am really quite concerned about the way in which evidence seems to be being ignored 
in England in terms of the effectiveness of the Badger Cull. And if I can just go very briefly back to the previous question about biodiversity. Obviously, that's a devolved issue in Scotland, but uh, the EU uh, legislation, the directives that the questioner referred to at the outset, those are picked up in the Scottish Government's 2020 challenge for uh, biodiversity, which was published in 2013 and is an update of the previous biodiversity strategy. So maybe that's an nerdy point as well, but that's where to, to find out more information about that. What would you do about badgers if Labour was elected? We're very Baron. clear that we will observe the signs. Look, Ro Rosie is, is probably the premier epide epidemiologist on this in, in the country. Uh, what she says is indisputably right. And what the government did is it just said, fine, in future, we didn't like the, the scientific report that we got back on, on, on the first culls. In future, we're not going to have a scientific report back on the culls. Can I, 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 let, and, me, and, let me ask Rosie on this. Well, yeah, well, well, can, I, can, can I just elaborate? Yeah, sure. Then by all means bring Rosie in because yeah. she's the expert. I want, I want to ask you that, uh, that uh, uh, specifically. I, um, some of us have had an opportunity to read some of what you've written, not with the expertise that you obviously have. Is it, is it your view that you do need to... Uh, cull the badger population and that you that, that the badgers are one of the creatures that are responsible for infecting uh, farm animals with all the consequences that Rupert described? Absolutely. Yeah. Bovine tuberculosis is a terrible problem for farmers in Britain. Badgers are involved. Badgers are part of the problem, no question. And anybody who says different doesn't know what they're talking about. And, and given that, do you, do you... I mean, scientists can say they, this ain't working, mate. Um, do you have a notion of what would work? A vaccination programme? Uh... So the, 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 the problem is that once you start to cull badgers, you, you have these unexpected consequences, which means that, that culling badgers, despite badgers' role, can make TB problem in cattle worse rather than better. Um, yes, there are other things that you can do. There are other things you can explore. In West Cornwall, we're trialling uh, the vaccination of badgers to see what role that that might play. Um, but I think that... Um, there's a lot that can be done with cattle-to-cattle -cattle transmission as well. And I, I should say, I'm not the biggest expert on this because I've seen some other TB experts. In the ah, room. modesty, <laughs> modesty. OK, um, Barry, just so you want to finish no, off your point. No, look, we, we would absolutely uh, ob insist that there was the scientific review, but we have said we will stop the culling um, absolutely on, on day one for precisely the reasons. We will... We accept entirely what Rosie said, that bovine TB is an enormous problem. About £100 million pounds a year, uh, is, is, this is costing the public purse. And, and farmers, it's devastating for farmers to have this. But what, what we say is we have to look at far better um, uh, biosecurity on farms as well, as well as looking at the, the, uh, the vaccination program of badgers and because of precisely what Rosie's talking about, which is the perturbation effect. It, I mean, it goes right back to the Krebs report, um, what, almost 10 years ago now, um, where he set out the difficulties, and, and this was done, this was trialled, and he set out very clearly the difficulties of doing this, unless you did it both at scale and with, uh, at, at a percentage of the badger population that was not going to then result in, in it spilling over and actually causing greater problems in bovine TB than you were trying to solve. There are significant numbers of, the, of, the, of significant number of voters who are opposed in principle to the killing or culling of badgers, whatever means that were decided as being uh, 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 effective. It isn't your position, it isn't Labour's position that, you, that no badgers must be killed. La Labour's position is that we will stop the culls on day one of a Labour government. That's not answering my question. Uh, in principle, <laughs> are you opposed or not opposed? I think it's very important for a significant number of voters whether you're opposed in principle to culling, if you could find a way that satisfied the scientists. What I think has been shown by all the attempts to do a cull is that it is not possible to do it in the way that was outlined by Krebs without, without sustaining exactly the problems uh, that Rosie's talked about. Sorry, so, perhaps I'm just not being... Perhaps I'm asking the no, question no, in a no. confused way. Uh, I no, have a feeling I not. might not be. But, um, uh, 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 so allow me to persist one more time. I want to ask you, in principle, are you opposed to taking life away from badgers 
in order to uh, have some effect on the bovine TB problem if there was a way of achieving that that met the criteria set by scientists? Yes, I understand your question perfectly, and I will answer it perfectly. It's a yes or no? No, no, it's not, actually. Um, because I, I'm almost inclined uh, to ask a show of hands on that, but I shan't. Because, because actually, perhaps I will other, if you go there on. Are, there are <laughs> other ways of doing it, such as vaccination of Badger's programme. So it, you can solve the problem in other ways, and these are the primary ways in terms of bovine, uh, in terms of biosecurity on farms and on, on batch of vaccination. Natalie, and then back over here, and then we must move on. Um, just a, a little reflection, really. I mean, I entirely agree that um, what we're seeing is an utter um, government utterly ignoring the science, and there is a sort of parallel with the previous Labour government with um, certain issues on illegal drugs where they also ignored the uh, expert scientific advice. Um, but I think um, I was on the ground with sort of the wounded badger patrols a well, year, 18 months or so back now. And one of the things that there's been very little talking about is how much damage it's done to those communities as well, that the communities have actually been torn apart by people feeling like they're on different sides or they're forced into different sides. You know, it's been very disruptive as well. You know, it's inhumane. It's unscientific. It has to stop. But I do just also want to pick up, so I didn't, since I didn't get a chance to get in on the previous question about um, European nature directives, and the question was actually, can we guarantee to improve them? And no, we can't because it depends on the whole politics of Europe. What I can guarantee to do is fight that extremely hard to improve them. And one of the things that hasn't come this up this evening that I think we really should mention is the proposed EU-US free trade deal known as TTIP, which is a huge threat to the environmental standards and work of rights standards and lots of other standards, um, which the Green Party is utterly opposed to and is a huge issue for Europe and for the UK. Anyone want to come back in on that? Can I just, just yeah. come back on, uh, uh, Rosie mentioned the issue of perturbation, which is absolutely right, which is uh, that if you allow farmers willy-nilly to go around uh, culling badgers, they will um, move around, it encourages them to move around more, and that will spread TB, and she's absolutely right. And actually, the evidence of the randomised badger cull trials uh, in the early 2000s uh, was that you need to do it um, in large areas with hard edges. Uh, they used uh, 10 areas of about 100 square kilometres, I think. Um, we are using uh, two areas of between two and 300 square kilometres uh, with uh, as hard edges as we can get. Um, are they, Rosie? Are they? Are they? Are they doing their best to meet your criteria? Although they've, they, 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 mm -hmm. they, they didn't like the independent. Yes, they, 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 they've designed the, the licensing criteria to try and, and uh, fit to what the scientific evidence suggested. But the problem is that um, if the estimates of badger numbers are correct and the estimates of the proportion of badgers killed are correct, then they've just not been able to reduce the badger density sufficiently to be confident of controlling the disease, they're in the zone where they're risking making it worse. Okay. I just want, just want to yeah, say one more thing on... Uh, I mean, I agree, by the way, about um, the importance... I think Barry mentioned of, of movement controls and biosecurity on farm. I absolutely agree about that. Um, but vaccination has been much talked about, and we are indeed uh, undertaking vaccination in the what, what we call the edge area. We have a high-risk area, which is the southwest of the country. Uh, we have an edge area which surrounds that, and then the north and, indeed, Scotland are the, the lower-risk areas. Uh, um, if you can do vaccination in areas where badgers, uh, um, where TB is not um, uh, endemic in the, if that's the right word, in the badger population, uh, it can work. Um, it's much less likely to work in the high risk areas. Uh, the reasons are um, that you have to, first of all, you have to do it every year. Uh, and secondly, that obviously it is of no use if the badger is already infected. Uh, so there are limitations, but uh, there is nonetheless a place for, for vaccination. I'm, I'm going to move, move us on to our next question, which is, um, it's on technology, specifically 